From using insects for stitches to putting together gaming systems for computers, you'd be amazed to hear just how some things have been created in everyday modern life. Sure, there are some tips and tricks that we learned in school, but today we're showing you 10 of the most insane ideas that have been thought up out of the blue. And the best part? All of these ideas actually worked. We've got a great idea for you today. Before we start, click subscribe and you'll never miss out on any of our other videos again. Isn't that smart? Saving the dolphins. When two dolphins in China swallowed garbage, nobody was sure what could be done to save them. Animals swallow this kind of stuff all the time in the wild, and it's always horrible watching them and not knowing whether or not they'll make it through the pain. Vets tried their best to help the dolphins, but the plastic was lodged so far down inside their stomachs that they could not reach. What else could be done? They racked their brains, not knowing what else to do. They couldn't use forceps or anything too medical for fear of hurting the animals anymore. They didn't want to operate in case the dolphins couldn't get through the trauma. What they needed was someone with longer arms. And luckily, although it seemed like a far-fetched idea, someone with long arms happened to be in the press at the same time and was willing to help out. Bao Zishun, the tallest man in the world, also has pretty lengthy arms to match. He was brought to the area and luckily managed to reach down and safely retrieve the rubbish. Once their throats were free, the dolphins could breathe normally again and continue to live their lives. Silly String to Safety you might remember the rainbow-colored silly string from your childhood, but you'd never guess that it's still being used, but in a whole different way now. Soldiers in Iraq had to tread very carefully in foreign areas because of tripwires. Unsurprisingly, the wires are incredibly dangerous, and they're also very difficult to spot. It became increasingly difficult for soldiers to walk around the areas without getting caught up in the tripwires. So they had an idea. How could they make the wires visible without having to touch them? The answer came from one innovative New Jersey soldier, who decided to think back to his youth like never before. The silly string was perfect because it attaches itself to the wires without the soldiers having to get even remotely close. If the silly string falls straight to the ground, the area is safe to cross. But if it sticks to something, the soldiers know to take another route. It's an idea that seems almost laughable, but saved the US government a whole lot of money. Now, a countrywide donation program has been kickstarted, and over 1,000 cans of the stuff have been sent out to soldiers needing a helping hand. It may look strange, but this one odd trick has saved so many lives already. Ivanhoe Reservoir. When this Californian reservoir started giving off bad chemicals, the Department of Water Protection knew they had to step in before it got too bad. The man-made body of water had started to create the carcinogenic chemical bromate as a result of combined sunlight, chlorine, and natural bromides underwater. They weren't entirely sure what to do. They knew they would have to rebuild the bottom of the reservoir, but that would take years, and who knew what sort of deadly levels the chemicals would have reached by then. They planned to drain the water, rebuild the bottom of the reservoir, and fill it up again, but that whole process could take up to six years. They needed needed a faster solution. There was no way to get rid of the natural chemicals for the time being, and they needed the chlorine to keep it sterile. So all that was left to remove was the sunlight. But how? California is known for its beautiful sunshine, and as much as we wish we could alter the weather sometimes, we know it's not possible. The company realized they would need to shade the water artificially. Instead of planting trees or something equally logical, they decided to flood the reservoir with black bird balls, which would reflect the sunlight. Strangely enough, it worked, and the developers could finally get on in peace. Super PlayStations. When you were younger, you probably had a PlayStation or a similar gaming device. You might even still own one now. But whereas you most likely spent hours playing video games about cars or mystery worlds, someone out there was building a supercomputer out of their model. And not just anyone. Back in 2006, the US Air Force Research Laboratory had an issue they just couldn't solve. They needed a new computer and didn't have the funds to purchase one. This wasn't just a computer that could be funded by the odd bake sale, but one that would cost millions of dollars. The software was so expensive, they tried to think of a different solution with the same electronic capabilities instead. We like to think this idea came as an epiphany to one of the team members during an intense night of gaming, but the reality is probably not half as exciting. While trying to find a cheaper alternative to their supercomputer, the team looked at the capabilities of a PlayStation machine and decided they could make a computer out of it. Eventually, after hooking up 400 machines at a cost of around $2 million, the new computer was born. Just as efficient and a fraction of the price, the machine still stands in Rome, Italy, and can tackle tasks ranging from artificial intelligence research to radar enhancement. The Singing Revolution we bet your first thought when someone gets on your bad side is not to burst into song. Maybe you shout, maybe you run off and sulk, but singing isn't usually our answer when we're angry. 
But that's exactly what the Baltic states did when it came to restoring independence for Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. It was the year 1989, and the Baltic states had had enough. Not having their own independence meant losing control over their languages, histories, and people. It was understandable they wanted to be free to develop as individual nations, but they weren't sure how to go about asking for their request. Europe as a whole had suffered a lot over the last 50 years, and nobody wanted more violence. Instead, they decided to do a peaceful protest, but one slightly different to most. This was not your average protest, either, because more than a handful of people turned up. In fact, just over 2 million people from these different nations stood together holding hands and singing. Their request was simple. They wanted independence, and they wanted to get it without violence. It was the biggest protest that officials had ever seen. It took a while, but it worked. Straight away, officials admitted they'd been wrong, and a year and a half later, all three states were declared independent. An unlikely assistant. When we injure ourselves, we're always told to keep the wounds clean, wash it frequently, bandage it up, and don't let it get infected. Well, we're here to tell you to ignore almost everything you were told about this. Okay, so not entirely. We still recommend keeping wounds clean, but there could be an easier way to get it healing faster than bandages. This idea was created in the 6th century, when doctors didn't have the impressive variety of equipment that we're used to seeing in modern day hospitals. If you hurt yourself badly, you get stitches. They're used to keep the skin together so it can heal the same way it was before. So what do you think doctors used to use before disposable thread was available? Well, they used ants. The idea probably made you flinch, because we don't like ants, or any other bugs for that matter, near us when we're healthy. But big black ants have an unlikely benefit. They can be used to help heal skin. Olden day doctors would, in fact, draw the ants towards the broken skin, and once the ant had climbed halfway inside the wound, they'd rip the body off. Repeat the process, and you've got a line of makeshift stitches that keep the skin bound together. It's not ideal, but it works. We would still recommend a trip to the nearest medical center, but we guessed back in the 6th century this wasn't an option. The Giant Mirror Trick We've all seen tricks before with mirrors. Some make our hands look bigger, some make it look like there's nothing behind us, and some do completely different things. If you studied hard in science, you might know a few reflective mirror tricks that can be used to keep the sunshine in. They're known for being useful out in the wild if you've got to keep warm or start a fire. But this mirror trick was also used on a far larger scale in the village of Viganella in Italy. Based in the Alps, the small village was growing more and more sun deprived, much to the distress of the inhabitants and their land. Something had to be done. So, rather than suffering through endlessly cold days, the villagers decided to create their own giant mirror, which would then reflect sunlight for a much longer period of time. Installed at the bottom of the mountain, it reflects upwards towards the village piazza on the north side, which allows the bottom villagers to access sunshine between November and February. At a cost of around $100,000, it was an expensive purchase for the local government, but residents say it makes the area feel less like Siberia, and more like, well, Italy. Two-Faced Masks we're pretty certain that if we bumped into someone with two faces, we'd run far away. This is also what the inhabitants of the Ganges Delta in India thought, when they realized they needed a way to keep Bengal tigers from attacking them. The problem was growing, and the tigers were attacking around 60 people per year. But these tigers were known for being slightly scared of humans, and only attacking from behind where they couldn't be seen. It seemed like a tricky problem for the community, because like the rest of us, they don't have eyes in the back of their heads. Short of standing back to back and walking that way at all times, what else could they do to keep the tigers away? They needed a way to make the tigers think they were facing them, without having to double check their surroundings at all times. The solution? Wear masks on the back of their heads. They didn't quite work as a double pair of eyes, but the trick worked to keep tigers away. If they thought the humans could see them, the tigers would run off and find someone else to bother. With all of the locals sporting special masks to shield their heads, the number of Bengal tiger attacks reduced to only 29 in 18 months. Good cop, bad cop. In most countries, the police follow their orders. If you're lucky, you might even get away with the odd speeding ticket or two if you're extra polite to the officer. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case in the country of Georgia, where there was a big problem with corrupt police officers. For a while, President Mikhail Saakashvili wondered if the issue was to do with the residents of the country or the police itself. He soon found his answer lay in the hands of the cops, who were supposedly guarding the city. The president made an ultimatum. Any police officer who was caught not following orders or acting in a corrupt manner would be fired. Similar threats had been made in the past, so the officers didn't think too much of it, but the president wasn't lying. The next day, 15,000 cops were fired for taking bribes from citizens. Over the next few days, another 15,000 were also given the sack. 
it was clear that President Michael wasn't missing around. Eventually, the entire police force had been lost, and strangely enough, the crime rate went down. It seemed like Georgia was safer in the hands of the residents rather than in the police force. Eventually, new cops were hired, and they most definitely kept their toes to the line for fear of being fired. Norway's Rehabilitation if we do something wrong, we're punished for it. That's the way it's always been, right? It usually works as a good deterrent, and it's made most of us grow up into well-rounded, well-behaved people. But not everybody reacts the same way to punishment, and for some, it even acts as a catalyst for a life of crime. Norway decided that another method could work better for helping people who were on the wrong path. Instead of punishing people and forcing them into prisons where they could get up to all sorts of trouble, Norway chose to focus on rehabilitation instead. And this is how one country started to overhaul their entire prison system, much to the shock of surrounding nations. Inside the Norwegian incarceration program, inmates live in small communities called pods and are given lots of times to focus on education and hobbies. In the summer, they can swim at the nearby beach, and in the winter, they can go fishing. The country has the lowest reoffending rate in the whole of Europe, and inmates report that they're treated much more like people than prisoners. The decision to uphold the system was initially seen as incredibly controversial, but it has most definitely paid off in the long run. If this video didn't get you second-guessing all of your own weird ideas, then we're not sure what will. We know you're aching to hunt down your old notebooks from your school days to find those ancient inventions you plotted up, but before you go, make sure you're subscribed to The Hub. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.